So guys, I just posted a video going over the bug fixes in Android 14 QPR2 beta number three, but as per usual, there are some sort of hidden features within this update. Now, typically I'm running these betas on something like my Pixel Fold and I'm just gonna show you them live, but I'm off the beta train currently. So what we're going to do instead is we're gonna turn our attention to this article on androidauthority.com and we're going to sort of deep dive a little bit into those features that way because they've already kind of broken them down. I will link to this article in the description down below. Do indeed go click on it and give them a hit. Look at some beautiful ads for them because they did the legwork here. So the first one we're going to talk about and I'm actually going to intentionally leave at least a couple of them out to give you an incentive to go to the original article ones that aren't necessarily that big of a deal. But if you wanna see what they are, go click on the link in the description. The first one we're gonna talk about is the make all apps dark setting. This was spotted by a friend of the channel, Michelle Ramon here on Twitter. They posted this on uh, threads as well. And basically what this is may be kind of familiar to you. If you go into your developer options, there has actually long been a setting like this that will force applications to use dark mode, whether they want to, whether they are good at it or not. And what they appear to have done is move that setting into the color and motion section within the accessibility settings. So if you have some app that somehow in the year 2024 has still not adopted a dark mode, you will be able to, as long as this change sticks, and that's something we must always keep in mind with these betas, sometimes features get added and then they are removed before stable. If this one sticks, tick that box and it will force apps. It will make all apps dark. This next one is something that Pixel Fold and perhaps Pixel Tablet users have wanted from the inception of their devices. On these devices, the taskbar that allows you to do your multitasking is transient in nature. What this means is you swipe up from the bottom to get your taskbar, you do what you need to do, and then it slides back down. It hides itself away uh, quite conveniently, but perhaps you prefer the implementation on such devices as the OnePlus Open or the Z Fold line where this taskbar can be permanently pinned to the bottom of the screen. Well, that is not quite functional in QPR 2 beta number three, but there are some hints that this may indeed be coming very soon. We can see this animation, which is apparently buried in the Pixel Launcher, showing exactly that. We are just gonna go straight to Twitter and we'll watch the animation present on Michelle Rowan's Twitter account. And you can see exactly what we mean here. We're toggling a box and we're switching from the transient bar to a pinned bar down at the bottom. I think that this is really, really nice. And it's something that I definitely wanna try out. I have used many foldables with a permanent task bar. And so I would love to see how I'm gonna feel about that on a device like the Pixel Fold. Now, I think one big reason why maybe I won't use it on the Pixel Fold is that this is a landscape tablet, which means that vertical space is already a bit at a premium, right? So it's not as tall, as much it's wider than it is tall. So having a permanent taskbar down there will shrink the vertical space just a little bit more when you have your device open. So maybe you wanna use that, maybe you don't wanna use that, but at any rate, the option appears to be on the way very, very soon. Now, if we just continue this on Michelle Ramon's uh, Twitter account, I'll link to the thread that they posted where they uncovered a few more things. I think this is pretty interesting as well. Way back in February, Michelle talked about the fact that Android 14 was preparing to add a new option in the settings to convert a physical SIM to eSIM. Just make that process all the more easy. And it appears as though that convert to eSIM option has now sort of reappeared in this beta three, although it doesn't appear to actually do anything at this moment, it does seem like much like the permanent taskbar feature, it is something that they are working on and hopefully it will be rolled out with the stable release of the QPR2 sometime in around March, perhaps. It is seemingly odd that we are this far along, we're on a beta three and it's not even February yet, let alone March, even though typically these things do go stable in March, maybe it'll be a bit earlier this time. Hard to say exactly what the timing's going to be. We've also seen the return of the unified 
Pixel software update page. This is something that they actually kind of rolled out and then it went away and now it's back again. I think it actually does look really, really nice and it puts your system updates and your app updates all in one area, which I think is really, really smart. It's one of the kind of weird things about Android that I, I wish they did a better job of. There are sometimes things are sort of fragmented and put in weird places and the more we can kind of unify things like this. Hey, I want to make sure my apps are updated. Do I go to my update section? No, you go to the Play Store and then you go to updates. Now, that's intuitive and fine for Android uh, veterans, but maybe not for other people. Maybe it would be easier for people that are uninitiated to just have it all in one area. Then, you know, you want to update your Google Play services. Well, that's another place that you have to go. Sometimes you have to go into your apps and then find it, open it up in the Play Store, and then run the update because sometimes it just doesn't show up when you think it would in just the... Play Store updates again. This makes a lot of sense to me. Like I said, I'm going to drop a link in the description down below to the Android Authority article as well as to Michelle Rahman's article on Twitter where there are a whole bunch more, several more sort of changes. Maybe not some big ones, but ones that you might want to check out. So do check out those links down below to uh, see more stuff like that. Let me know, are you running QPR2 beta number three? If you are, how have things been going? I do want to kind of drop one little report now that I've had a little bit of time to kind of gather some information. One of the bug fixes was supposedly going to fix the fact that if you took your Pixel Fold, this was on QPR2 beta number, I think one and two. If you were unlocked and you opened it, you would be greeted by a black screen for some amount of time before it would actually transition to the screen being on. They said they'd fix that and I'm getting mixed reports on this. Some are saying it's fixed for them. Some are saying it is still not fixed for them, which I think is very disappointing. And it sort of bolsters my position currently that I am just not going to run these betas for a while because that was absolutely driving me crazy. So keep bringing me reports on that stuff. What's the situation for you? It's going to help out me. It's also going to help other people reading these comments to know what's going on. Should they install this beta or should they wait until the stable? I think probably right now you should just wait for the stable. If you want to see all the features that were introduced with QPR2 in the beginning, because that's when most of them were introduced, I'll drop a link down below to that video where it went over all that stuff a month or so back. Guys, all that being said, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.